Welcome to this new Premiere Pro tutorial where you'll learn how to use Proc. La, 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 la. Welcome to this new Premiere Pro tutorial where you will learn how to use proxies and a proper proxy Premiere Pro workflow. Say that 10 times fast. So what are proxies and why would you use them? If you're editing high resolution footage, 4K, 6K, 8K footage, and your computer isn't up to the task, if you're getting choppy playback, you might want to use proxies where you're actually creating temporary smaller resolution, smaller file size videos to work with while you edit so that you can add all your effects and do everything and play back your videos without any choppiness. But then at the end of the day, you will what we call attach the higher resolution original files to your clips so that when you're exporting your videos, it's high resolution just as you want. So there's a couple ways to do this and I'll go through the first. Oftentimes I think people already have their footage imported onto into Premiere Pro and then they realize, okay, wow, this is a 4K file. Let's go create proxies for this. To do that, all you need to do is right click in Premiere Pro, go down to proxy and choose create proxies. It's going to ask you what format you want H.264 at a low pro resolution is great for um, Windows and Mac. QuickTime, Cineform is also another good option. Then you choose where you want to save it. So you can put it in the original file where folder where your master clip is, or you can set a specific folder. So I'm going to do that here just so it's easier for me to see. I've created a proxy folder on my desktop and then click OK. You can do this with multiple clips. So you can select multiple clips and do it all at once. And we didn't see it happen but because it was so fast, but it actually opened the clip in Media Encoder, processed it, and now this file is in this proxy folder. And if you were paying attention before, this file wasn't here before. So this file is 1024 by 540 and should be a lot easier for Premiere Pro to work with. So say I start a sequence with this file. We're going to call this proxy workflow. You probably still don't have the proxy attached to this because you haven't enabled it. So you need to open up this toggle proxies button if you don't have that on here. Click this one and drag it onto your program monitor down there. With this on, it is now telling Premiere Pro to read the proxy files. And you can double check this by, if I uncheck this, you can actually see what file is on your timeline, what file it's reading by right clicking, scrolling down to reveal in Finder or reveal in Documents if, that's, if you're using um, a PC. And so you can see that it opens up the original file location, which is under videos. But if I toggle this on, and now I right click and choose reveal and finder, it opens up the proxy folder. So that's how you can double check if this is working or not. So if we go up to sequence settings, we still see that our sequence is 3840 by 2160. It's still a 4K sequence of the original file. And even if we go to effect controls, if we click on this clip, it still represents this clip as the original size. It's not like it's adding that proxy file to this 4K sequence as a smaller file, which I can kind of show you if you created proxies and then you import the proxies separately. And if I bring it down to the timeline now, you can see that this is what the proxy file actually looks like and I would have to scale it up quite a bit. But that's not the way to do it. What we are doing is it's just setting to read this file from that proxy file. So that's one way to do it. So if you already have your videos in Premiere Pro, you can do it through this menu. Now to turn this off, you just turn that off and you can export. Another way to do this is through your media browser when you actually import your footage. So we haven't seen the media browser before in the course, but if you go up to Window, 
media browser, it's going to open up this tab. And I've put it up here so that I can see both the media browser and my project panel. And this is basically just like a file viewer where you can go through your folders, your external hard drives, and find footage that you want to import. But what you can also do is set up an automatic proxy workflow. So here's the file that I know is the 4K resolution file. If I choose open ingest settings, I can check this box to say create proxies. And again, you can choose a preset, H.264, Cineform, etc. You can choose where you want to save it and then click OK. And now since I clicked OK, it automatically checks this box and you want to make sure that's checked on if you want the proxy to be created. And so again, if I take this footage, let me just take both of these clips just so you can see. If I take this footage, I'm going to add it to this folder. And now if I go to Media Encoder, you can see that it's actually processing this right now. And it's creating those additional proxy files that show up here in our proxy folder. And so one of these files was a 1920 by 1080 file. So that's going to be smaller than the frame anyways. But the original clip, which was the 4K footage, it's actually the same shot as this one. It's just the original file. We have proxies enabled for these. And again, just to double check, if we go to this one, if we right click, say reveal in Finder, it's connected to that proxy. If we uncheck this, right click, reveal in Finder, it's the movie file that's actually in my, uh, fol my camera folder, or that's actually my SD card, which I shouldn't be doing that. I should be taking that footage from my SD card to my external hard drive first anyways. So that's the separate way. So if you know if you are going to be working with proxies, when you import your footage, you should do it through the media browser this way. Now, there is one other method that you might consider and that's if you want to create your proxies in a separate application. Or maybe someone has handed you a batch of files that ha have already been created as proxies. What you can do there is simply right click the clip that you want to add a proxy to or attach a proxy to. So this one already has the proxy we've created, but if you want to attach a separate proxy, you can click attach proxies. It's going to ask you the clips that you want to attach for. Click attach. And then you find the clip in your, in your computer that you want to attach. So let's go find that desktop proxy folder. And then you check on the clip that you want to attach as a proxy. Click OK. And so now this clip is attached to that proxy file. And that could be any file that you've created before. But of course, you got to be careful that method because you got to make sure that it's the same exact clip and it's the same length and everything like that. And then lastly, once you're done with that, if you want to get rid of the proxies and just not have them be a thing anymore, you can choose detach proxies or reconnect full resolution media. And then you go through the same process. You click attach, you find the full resolution media, click OK. And now that clip is going to be attached to the full resolution file. The other way or reason you might use this option here under proxy for reconnecting full resolution media is there might be a time where you're working on a team on a project. Maybe you're editing a project for someone on the other side of the world where they actually just send you the proxy files and they don't even send you the full resolution media. And so you're working, you're editing your project with the proxies, but once they get the project file back, you don't have to send them the proxy files. You just send the project file and they can go in and reconnect the full resolution footage through this menu for all of the clips that you were working on. I know that might be a little bit confusing, so if you have any questions, let me know. But at this point, you know how to create proxies, you know proper proxy workflow, and I think this can help you edit high resolution files even better. Thanks so much, and we'll see you in another video.